this is my review for 24 season 7 episode I'm not sure what episode because I don't have it written on my paper um, whatever it says it in the title of the post um, for me this is actually the best um, overall I thought this was the best overall episode of this season so far I have reasons I have reasons why um, you know, I think that it's doing, the show's doing a really great job of keeping the momentum up that it's built over the past few episodes. Um, I thought that the first half of the season was, it was good, I liked it, it was definitely much better than I expected it to be. But it also fell a bit short of, like, the potential that I felt that it had. <clears throat> um, if this season keeps up with what it's doing, it could be a great season of the show, if it keeps up the momentum. <clears throat> um, okay, so Janice is on a power trip after Renee's suspension, Chloe being detained, and Sean and that other woman being moles. She obviously takes a great deal of pride by being Moss's number two person that he can trust. That's my observation. It's one of my observations. Okay. Um, the only issue I had with the episode was the fact that Jonas Hodges, played by John Boyd, has a really sort of unoriginal motivation for what he's doing. It seems that um, sacrificing lives for the greater good so that America can understand that terrorism is a real threat is sort of the motivation for a lot of the villains on this show. At least a few of them that I can remember. I mean, obviously that there have been other villains on the show that have other ones, but I was kind of hoping for something a bit more original than that. Um, it's kind of boring. I still really like Hodges as a villain, I think he's interesting, but motivation's kind of not very, not very unique. I wanted something like totally freaking crazy. Um, so Morris agreed to help trading, to trade helping Moss with um, Chloe's immunity, and I think that he made the right decision. I think that he held out as long as he could, um, considering that, you know, his wife was going to be sitting in jail for the next 15 years so that um, he could by you know he the fact that he it's the fact that he considered it you know with the consequences involved I mean I know Jack saved his life and everything but isn't he also I mean didn't like Jack like get pissed at him for not enduring more torture I don't <laughs> I don't remember I remember Jack pissing me off with that though I don't remember what the I don't remember it's been a long time but um so yeah, I think the fact that he even considered it, like, and said no the first time is really impressive. Um, I think that it shows <clears throat> his loyalty to Jack even if he did, even if he did end up making the deal. My question is, does Chloe or Tony know that Bill's dead yet? Because no one seems to give two shits. What, what the fuck? <clears throat> the Olivia and Ethan story made great headway, and I will say right now that there is no way no way in hell she did not leak that story. That is absolute nonsense. The look on her face, just, <laughs> that's all you needed to see. Um, it really sucks to see how quickly Ethan can lose his cool when he's dealing with Olivia. It doesn't really bode well for the future at all. It, but, you know, it seems that he's resigning next episode based on the preview. So the plot's going to be moving forward a lot more quickly than I had expected it to. Um... I think Ethan might be my favorite new character on the show. I like him more than Renee, I like him more than Moss, I like him... Mm, yeah, I like him more than Janice. I like him as much as President Taylor, because I really like President Taylor. Uh, I f I'm finding that I care so much about what happens to him, that's sort of ludicrous. Olivia, on the other hand, is a huge fat wench. She's not fat, but she's a huge wench. Um, yeah, she's... She's pretty evil. Um, I don't think that taking her idea and incorporating it into the speech was a good idea. Um, I understand that President Taylor wants to show that she's taking her daughter's advice and that she cares what she has to say. Um, but with a speech like that, that sort of sets the tone for the country's state of mind and something that analysts will obviously be dissecting till the end of time. I don't think that this was really the right time to listen to Olivia. Um, I'm, I'm so interested in this storyline. I can't even handle how interested I am in it. It's probably my favorite thing going on in the show right now. Um, 
Renee helped Jack out and Moss knows Renee really well, so he figured that out immediately. Nice job, Moss. Even though you're a moron, I give you props. Although Renee's really not that discreet with things, so it's fine. Um, now Renee is in holding instead of Chloe, so it's like musical chairs, essentially, with who's in holding in the FBI this week. Um, the most interesting stuff in this episode uh, actually had to do with Jack. Um, I kind of always found the President Taylor stuff the most interesting this season so far, but Jack sort of took the reins this week. Um, his conversations with Senator Mayer might have been my favorite stuff of the season so far. Um, he opened up to him about his actions, about losing his family. We never see this guy open up to anybody. This was really strange and new for us, I think. He opened up to Renee a bit, but it wasn't... It was sort of more in a defending. Actually, this was sort of too. Whatever, it, it was just different, I thought. Um, you could tell that they're sort of sprinkling Kim's name in, like, throughout the season so far. They've mentioned her, like, three or four times, either as Kim or as my daughter, um, since she will be appearing at the end of the season. Sorry if nobody knew that. I'll, I'll put a spoiler alert thing. Um, but Alicia Cuthbert is signed on for the last four episodes of the season, so they're kind of setting us up for that already. Um, he mentioned Terry. God, that was so long ago. It's good to know that it still affects me, though. Oh, well, obviously it would. Um, you know, they worked together for a common cause, him and Senator Mayer, you know. He admitted that Jack was onto something, and even though they still disagreed about a lot of stuff, you know, he believed that Jack was being, was being framed, he was willing to help him out so they could dig further into his lead. It was just, I don't know, it was sort of a little bit but it was just awesome I thought um, he even called him son I don't think I've ever heard anyone call Jack Bauer son before it was so adorable can we it, it was adorable um, and then <laughs> Senator Mayer took some bullets in the chest which um, I actually did not see coming at all it's the first time I gasped out loud this season I came out of nowhere I'm sure it, I should have picked up on it, because it's like, oh, they have a touching moment. Oh, I'm going to go see who that is at the door. And yeah, the police would really wait patiently for two minutes, you know, before waiting for someone to answer, even though they're looking for a wanted man that's on what they think is a psychotic, like, killing spree. So, I should have caught on to it, but I was so invested in what was going on that it just totally went by me. And by the time he was shot, I was just, like, totally flabbergasted. Um, so, yeah, I, you know, and it's also stupid to assume that someone who has a heart-to-heart -heart with Jack and who could help a situation would actually survive more than one episode, because, um, everyone who gets close to Jack Bauer dies, even if it's only a conversation. Renee, your turn will come. It doesn't matter if it's in, like, three seasons or however friggin' long the show lasts. I don't know. Um... Yeah, I'm pretty, I'm pretty devastated to lose Senator Mayor. I thought that their interactions were really interesting, and the rapport that they built up within the episode was really uh, fascinating to me. And now it looks like Jack's a freaking psychopath, which is hilarious. Not really hilarious in the context of the show, but just the idea that Jack's like going around killing people is funny. Um, no idea how he's going to be able to clear his name at this point. Um, so then Jack leads Quinn into this trailer office thing, and he knocks it over with like a bulldozer and it's awesome <laughs> it's so awesome and i don't yeah this show just gets really awesome sometimes it just kind of surpasses the coolness factor and goes straight to awesome and this was that's this scene this specific scene was one of those scenes because then they have this ridiculous fight that's just like all punches and then jack chucks a screwdriver into his chest and then hits him in the head with a freaking wooden board Oh god, the show is so good sometimes. Um, it, it was a pretty classic 24 moment, I'm not gonna lie. So now Jack's on the run, and as if this episode couldn't get any more satisfying on just like a quality 24 level, Jack calls Tony for help and asks him to meet him at the docks. Jack and Tony, working together. You know, it had made no sense to me why Jack <laughs> waited this long to call Tony. I assumed that he would be the first one to call just because... Tony is the only other person that really is sort of in any sort of the same predicament that he's in. Um, 
but whatever, it took a long time to call him, but he did call him, so props for that. Um, so what, what was it that Tony wanted to say to Jack before Jack had to hang up? I think that's going to come into play pretty soon. Um, 